Occasionally it's brought up in comments that vintage Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars, made back in the 60s and earlier, may have lead paint in them. In the U.S., lead paint was banned in consumer goods in 1977. However, it can still be used today in some items like the yellow and white stripes on roads. But even that's being phased out. As a lot of us have quite a few vintage cars that predate the ban, I figured it'd be an interesting video to see if there was any validity to the claim that the pre-ban cars could contain lead. So for this experiment, I chose four cars to test. The red and blue cars are pre-1977 Hot Wheels models. The red car is an enamel based and the blue is a Spectre Flame, one of the original 16 cars Mattel brought out in 1968. So 1968 is as early as we can get for the Hot Wheels. The next two cars are Matchbox cars. Matchbox cars are a bit more difficult to determine the year they were made, but the ambulance would have been made around 1965 to 68. And the last car is a Moco Lesney and harks back to about 1958. So all the cars are made before 1977. So this is the test kit I'll be using purchased from Lowe's in the paint section. The kit has two swabs included in it. If lead is detected, the swabs will react with it and turn blood red. The kit also comes with four test dots impregnated with lead nitrate. If you test something and find no reaction, you can use the swabs on one of the test dots and confirm that the test swabs do in fact work. Using the swab is very simple. There's two glass vials inside the tube, one on each end. You crush each vial and then shake the contents together. Then you apply a small amount of pressure to squeeze out some of the solution into the swab. To see how well these work, I'll first test them out on a small sheet of lead. To use them, you simply rub the swab on the item you want to test for about 30 seconds, and then check the swab. If it appears blood red, then you know that lead is present. So I started with the Matchbox Ambulance and picked a spot that the paint was chipped and began to swab it. After about 30 seconds, I checked the swab and no change in color was detected. Up next is the Blue Spectroflame car. One of the main reasons lead was used in paint was that it improved paint's opacity. This is great if you're trying to cover something up on a wall. The paint on these Spectroflame cars is transparent though, so the odds they would use lead in Spectroflame is unlikely, and in this case, none was detected. If Mattel did use lead in their paint, then they would probably want to use it in their enamel line. But after 30 seconds, this also came up negative. Alright, so here's the last of the four cars, and the one with the greatest chance of having lead in the paint as it is a good 10 years older than the other cars we've tested so far. Lesney was still rather new to making toys when this model came out. Maybe they would have taken some shortcuts and used lead-based paint. Well, after 30 seconds, nothing. Not even a shade of pink. Well, not one to give up, I sort of started a crusade to find a vintage car that would give a positive result. When you make a video like this, you sort of want something spectacular to show your audience. But time and time again, I came up empty. I even tried some Tootsie toys just to see, and of course, nothing. If you think about it, though, this sort of makes sense. When a government bans something, it usually comes way after the fact. Lead was known to have been toxic long before 1977, and any toy manufacturer that wished to exist and sell their toys in the U.S. removed lead from their toys voluntarily before the ban. Lead paint can be used in the paint used on roads but even now companies are moving away from it, even though they're not legally forced to. No company wants to be the company that someone points out as putting a toxic substance in their product. That all being said, some toys do make it into the country containing lead. However, these toys tend to be from companies outside the US or UK that have no reputation to protect and where consumer safety takes a backseat to other priorities. I should also note that I didn't test every car from every year and every batch of paint, so there's always some small chance there could be a lead-laden Hot Wheels or Matchbox car out there, so keep that in mind before you let your two-year-old use your vintage cars as a teething tool. Anyway, thanks for watching.